and our next speaker is Ahmed El Aloui, uh, who is currently a postdoc at uh, Stanford, and he's our uh, Richard Carr Research Fellow in the Probability Program. Thank you, Prasad. Um, so here, yeah, this, this talk will be about uh, optimization of random functions. Um, just this is, uh, let me explain like at a high level why would we care about these things. So the main two questions we want to understand is trying to optimize highly non-convex and combinatorial functions in high dimensions. And also a related question is to sample from high dimensional distributions that are not necessarily nice. And so worst case theory here tells us that all of these problems, the most interesting cases are NP hard. However, we can see that in practice, a lot of these problems are solved in a routine way. Can you uh, scroll to the next slide, please? So, right, so in applications, we have a prevalence of non-convex, the, the previous one, thanks. Previous slide. Thank you. So we have a prevalence of non-convexity with a large number of parameters, but as I was saying, large instances are routinely solved with various heuristic on a daily basis. So maybe an, an explanation is that real world instances are rarely worst case, right? And the next plausible explanation is that noise in the data and randomness have a smoothing effect that just smooth out the edges of these hard problems and make them nice. So the main high level motivation here is to understand average case instances and how hard they are. So a very simplistic model is to consider random functions. So please, next slide. Right, so let me define these, these models that come from physics. They're called spin models. And these are very roughly speaking, families of random functions on the hypercube plus minus one to the power n and they're Gaussian. So these are just two examples that I showed you here. So the first one is just a quadratic that depends on uh, interactions between just two single sites, which are sigma, sigma i and sigma j. And the strength of this interaction is modeled by this random variable, this coefficient gij, which I'm going to consider to be Gaussian and iid. They're all independent, mean zero, variance one. The other example, which we call the three spin model, is almost the same thing, except that we have a three body interaction instead of a two body interaction. So these are polynomials. The first one is of degree two, the second one is of degree three, and the coefficients are all uh, random. So the problem here is to find approximate maximizer, maximizers in polynomial time. So this is the question of either of these two uh, problems. By the way, you can consider polynomials of higher degree just by following this idea of just adding monomials of higher degree, and then you can combine them linearly and the question doesn't change. You can still ask the same question. So the main results here that I want to discuss is that basically for the first problem, the answer, the answer is yes, conditional on a certain conjecture in mathematical physics that's called full or continuous replica symmetry breaking. I won't get, go into that. The second one is no, you can't do it. At least that's what we believe. But we can't provide an algorithm that runs in polynomial time and that approximates the solution to the currently best approximation ratio. This is the best approximation ratio that is currently known for polynomial time algorithms. Can you go to the next slide? All right, so we can actually implement these algorithms. These are very tractable. You can implement them in your computer and everything, and they scale pretty well to large dimensions. So the first uh, plot here on my left hand side, so the objective value is E opt, and you can see that with the algorithm as N increases, you tend to that value pretty, pretty quickly. On the other hand, on my right hand, the plot is for the problem for the three, and the optimal value is up there above 1.81. But the algorithmic value that we can achieve is E alg, which is slightly below. And we, this is for, for now, this is the best algorithmic uh, value that is achievable by a polynomial time algorithm. And we're interested in trying to understand this gap and try to bridge it by other means or try to under, or maybe prove that no algorithm can, can, can do better. And thank you. This is the end of my talk.